In this tutorial, we'll look at the rigging of a scissor mechanism. We will use an IK solver and several transform scripts. We'll start by isolating the links that form a basic four bar linkage. These links here. So let's get started. Here's a labeling scheme for the mechanism. I've used odd numbers for the light blue links and even numbers for the red links. We will start by modeling the slider crank mechanism. Right here I have a short link and a long link and a dummy object. If we look at these two links, you'll notice that the light blue links have their pivot point on the top of the link and the red links have their pivot point on the bottom. This keeps all the pivot points in the zero Z plane, so everything will be essentially on the XY plane and we can be sure to have a 2D mechanism. All, I've already linked these three components together so they're free to move. What I'd like to do is uh, position it with respect to my dummy base. So we'll go here and just uh, click on that and we'll keep the XYZ position, apply that, now that's centered. I'm going to link this mechanism to dummy base. I'm going to link all the components in this mechanism to dummy base. This will allow me to move the dummy base around and position my final mechanism anywhere in 3D space. First thing I'm going to do is uh, rotate the first link, essentially called the crank. I'm going to rotate that by 70 degrees, as you see here, and the red link by minus 7. These, these are arbitrary uh, angles, but I don't want to start off with a straight line for all the links. So now I can select the base and go to my animation IK solver, HI solver, and link it to the dummy that's linked to the long, long link. So now I can move that around and I have my basic slider crank mechanism. I'd like to limit that to only work in the X axis. So what I'm going to do is come over here and do my link information and check Y and Z. So this will ensure that I can just keep that motion to the x-axis. Notice that when I rotate dummy base, the mechanism doesn't rotate along with it. This is because I haven't linked the IK chain to dummy base. So let's do that now. So I'm going to link that. It will come here and select it by name, dummy base. So now if I go and rotate dummy base, the entire mechanism will rotate. All right, so we have that action the way we'd like it. The next thing to do, whoops, when I move this, I really want to grab the IK chain and not the dummy. All right, so that's our action. And now we would like all the other links to line up and work with this blue and red link. Now I've numbered this link here as S0 for short 0 and this link L2 for long 2 as we saw in our original uh, labeling diagram. Let's add a link to this mechanism. So we'll go down here and take one of our master links and use edit clone to make a copy and we're going to call this link L4. The even links are the red links and the odd links we've chosen to call those uh, bl the blue links. So I'll just temporarily put it up here and the first thing we want to do is come over to our motion tab, hit our assign controllers and we're going to use transform here. And When I use transform we're going to apply a transform script to this link. You'll notice that in the transform script we see right now matrix 3 and it's got several numbers after it. These are four sets of vectors. One, two, three, Four. This is uh, the first three sets. The first three vectors have something to do with the orientation 3D space. We'll ignore that for now, so we're not going to look at these three components. The last row of these four rows or four vectors defines the position and space of the particular object. So if we were to change this from, let's say, uh, 722, as we see here, to uh, 650, 650, and then click Evaluate, you can see it moves so that it has an X position of 650. What we want to do is position this thing with regard to the behavior of these two links. So I'm going to define 
two uh, variables. The first one I'm going to call TS0. The T for me means transform link S0. And I'm going to create that and we'll assign it to the track of object S0. So we expand that. I'm going to double click transform. So TS0 is target is S link the transform component. I'm also going to create a variable called TL2. Now I've used a capital L here and capitalization is important. I found that if I use a lowercase l it's sometimes hard to distinguish from the number one. So I'm going to call this TL2 with L being a capital. We'll create that variable and assign it to the track for link number two and we'll assign it to its transform. Alright, so now I can come up here and I can replace this matrix if I put TS0 there and say evaluate, whoa, where did it go? Well, it went way over there. Why? Let me turn the grid on for a second. You can see it positioned it to 0, 0, 0 because I haven't linked this to my dummy base. Remember, we're going to link all our components to dummy base. So I'm going to link this to dummy base. Now you can see it placed this at the 0, 0 of, of dummy because that's where this first link is. S0 is located at, at dummy base. If we were instead to put it here TS, TL2, TL2 and evaluate that, where would it place it? Whoa, why would it place it there? Well, if we look at this, TL2 is positioned along the X direction of TS0 by short link. The distance from here to here is 200. So it's really pushing positions out 200x with respect to dummy base. And the rotation is equal to the rotation of this long link of this link with respect to dummy base. So what would happen if we were to multiply the, the transform matrix for TL2 times the transform matrix to, for, for S0? Let's evaluate that. Well, you can see it put it directly on top of that link. So we can multiply matrices together. So we're taking the matrix for the short link and then multiplying it by that. This is different than doing it the opposite way around. That is, if we were to say TS0 times uh, TL2, this would give us a much different uh, TS, I, I spell that T, well, get a much different result. So we really want to do the end. The order we do this is to specify, evaluate that. We're going to uh, specify the parent, then the child. So we're going child, parent, child, parent down the line if we had a longer uh, expression to evaluate if this link or further down in the chain of links. Okay, so we know where that position is. But we don't want to put it there. We really want to place this over to the right a little bit from this this new link. Link 4 has to be to the right somewhat in the x direction. So what I'm going to do here is in this here I'm going to say m is equal to this. We'll set up a new variable m. We'll call that m for matrix. Matrix is defined as the product of these two matrices. And now what I'd like to do is say m m dot row 4. So I would like to extract row 4 of the matrix M. Remember that row 4 is the position vector of the uh, matrix. And I'm going to say that is equal to, well, in the X direction, what we've positioned, if we come straight down here, this distance is what the current value of X is. And we'd like to really double that distance. So I'm going to set that equal to M dot row 4 and I'm going to multiply that two times I've got to watch my typing here row 4 not row 5 row 4 now what we've said is take the current value of row 4 multiply it by 2 and assign that to the new value of row 4 so we've come up with a new change in in the row 4 of matrix M if we click evaluate now we get an error message it says unable to convert, and it gives me some XYZ, some vector, to type matrix. 
Well, if we look at this, we've evaluated a matrix. Now we have a row. So this is a vector. It's not a matrix. And what the transform controller is looking for at this stage is a matrix. So the last thing that we evaluate in this series of commands has got to be a matrix. M is a matrix. M, in this case, has been redefined. So if we evaluate that, we have our link position there. The position of this goes up and down. So what we might like to do instead, we only want the x component. So let's go in here and put a dot x on that and a dot x on this one and we can do an evaluation again. So now we only want to look at the x coordinate. So now that looks like it's positioned where we want it. Let's see, if I grab the IK chain for this and click move, these two links move as they should. So that's pretty cool. So let's take this link and we can use that and we can go and clone it, control V, and I'm gonna call this L6. We're going to look at the transform of L6. So this one is L4. This one is L6. I'm going to change a 2 here to 3 and evaluate that. And we can make another copy. So let's do that. Let's close these off and do a Control V again. And we can go L8, uh, evaluate, calculate that. We're going to look at its transform. And I'm going to change the 3 from the previous one to a 4 and we can evaluate that. So it's that easy. We have, we're, we're moving along here. If I select my uh, IK chain and I do a move, you can see the mechanism works. Okay, let's now work on the positioning of a long link. So we're going to take one of our master blue long links and we'll make a copy of that and call it capital L1, link one. And let's move that to uh, nearby where we're working. All right, so we've got this link here. Remember, it's important to link each of these objects to our dummy base. Okay, so we wanna write a transform uh, script for this. So we'll select it, we'll go to our transform script, and we will set this to transform script and we'll do it the same thing we did last time. We'll set up two variables, first one being transform of S0, the short link. And we want to assign that to the appropriate track. So we'll come over here to dummy and expand S0 and double click transform. And we're going to set up TL2 for link number two, capital L, remember. And we assign this to link number two which is here, double click transform. So we have those two set up and we're gonna set up a matrix here. M is equal to TL2 times TS0, just like we did last time. And if we evaluate that, it places it right on top of the um, red link. That's not where we want it and it's not at the orientation, however, we can get something about its X location from this current position. And the Y position, we want to bring this way down to here. So the Y value should really be the negative of the Y value. So we're going to introduce a new variable here called P for a point. And I'm going to say that point is equal to the matrix M, row 4. So we have a point now. I'd like to change that point's y coordinate. We don't want this up here. We do want its x value, but we want to bring it down here. So, so I'm going to make the y coordinate equal to minus the current y coordinate. Now, the orientation we want is not of the product of these two matrices, which gives me this red direction in this. The orientation we want, we can really grab from the orientation of my short link. So I'm going to redefine my matrix M to be TS0. So this would place it directly on top of the blue link. Let's see if that's, that. we'll, we'll evaluate that. Notice it placed it directly on top of it. But what we'd like to do here is change it such that row four or the position of my matrix M dot row four is really equal to the location of the current 
I got to make the 4 in there. So we're going to use P, which has been redefined. And finally, this is just a vector, so we have to go back to our matrix with the letter M, and we can evaluate that. And it positions it right there. We probably like it a little bit to the left, so maybe the x coordinate of this shouldn't be the same as that. This is really going to be, uh, if this is L1, this is going to be the coordinate for L3. So let's change this and come in here and redefine our point, p dot x. Let's just set that to 0 and see how that works. We'll evaluate. Ah, that's exactly where, where we want it. All right, so we can do that. And let's put this over here a little bit. And um, next thing I want to do is really make a copy of that. So I'm going to do a control V on that. Excuse me. Let's, let's select this link. So I've got L1 and control V gives me a clone and I want to do a L3. And L3 is right on top of that. So we want to change something about its X coordinate. I'm just going to wipe that out. I'll delete it because it wasn't a correct position, remember? And we can close that, and we can now make a clone of this one. And we'll call that L5. And we'll click OK, and we'll double click this. And we'll say that the X coordinate of that is equal to the current X coordinate, but we'd really like to multiply that by two. So I'm gonna say two times the current x coordinate and we'll evaluate that and it places it over a little bit. All right, we're on a roll here. Let's try one more. So I'll take that, control V. We're going to make a copy of that. We're going to call that uh, link uh, L7. Uh, and we'll click OK, do the transform here. And uh, we'll change the 2 here to a 3 and evaluate that. And it looks like we're moving right along. So you get the idea. We can now grab the IK chain and we have our scissor mechanism working pretty nicely. Again, this will work in 3D and we can go on and create the rest of the links in a similar fashion. Here we see the final scissor mechanism. Rather than grab the IK chain and pull this back and forth, what I've done here is created a dummy object, which I call dummy control. If we look at the IK chain, I've applied to it a float expression, which says, take the position of dummy control and divide it by 3.5. The 3.5 is because it's out one. The distance that this is out is one, two, three and a half times this distance. So now I can grab dummy control and move that back and forth and we have our mechanism. Again, we can view this in 3D like this. And because this is all associated with this dummy base, we can reorient this mechanism anywhere in space that we want. And it still works correctly. So I can hit that dummy control and grab that and move it in and out. Thank you.